Okay, so in this movie, we're going to talk about how to install the jQuery library for use in your web page. Now, the most obvious thing you're probably thinking is what anybody would think is you go to the jQuery website here, which is jQuery.com, and there is a button for downloading the library. And this is free. You can download it, and much like what we did with the grid system, the 960.js uh, files, is you just basically include those in the head of your document. And there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, but I'm going to show you a slightly better way of doing it that I want you to get in the habit of doing right off the bat. And there's a couple reasons why. Let me show you how to get the, the, the framework installed first, then I'll explain why we're linking uh, by not downloading this document here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close the browser. Let's go over to TextMate here. And actually, before I do that, let me open the jQuery folder so you can see what I've done. Basically, all I have is an index.html file that we're going to work with, and I have a folder that's labeled JS. Inside the JS, or JavaScript folder, I have a file called scripts.js. So this is a JavaScript file, and this is where I'm going to write my scripts that go in here. So let's close that down and let's go over to TextMate and let's open the index.html and what we're going to do is we're actually going to call jQuery from another place. Rather than download it, uh, one thing that's really nice is Google has an API, which we'll talk about in a second and basically Google hosts a lot of these frameworks uh, that you can use and it's really nice to be able just to link to the Google framework and I'll tell you why as soon as I show you how to do it. So anyway, what we're going to do is use the script tag. So I'll write script and we're going to go ahead and remember this tag closes. So let's go ahead and close the script tag. And we're not going to write scripts in here, but I'm going to link to an external one. This is the one that Google will serve up for us. And I'm going to write source src equals, and then this is a link. It's going to be http colon slash slash google.com slash js API. Now an API stands for Application Programmer Interface or Application Programming Interface and basically it's an interface that works a lot like a framework does. It's just got a fancier name and usually it's more complex in what it'll do and it'll do things because the word application is in there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call the Application Programming Interface and we're going to deal with that. So that's the first step is just make sure that you use a script tag and that's going to be your source. I'm going to drop a line and the second thing I want to do is I want to link up this scripts.js file because that's the one where I'm going to be writing the scripts that I want to use. So we're going to do another script tag and make sure you got that closed off. And uh, let's go back and let's put a source attribute in here, src equals js folder slash scripts.js. And that's it. That's all you've got to do. So the first thing we've done is we've written a script tag that, that pulls the JavaScript API from Google. And the second one is we're going to load this up. Now we have a few more things we need to do in here. Let's open that scripts.js file. And what we want to do is we need to talk to the Google API. And there's a set of commands you can run on this, but you really only need to know two of them. And I'm going to show you both of them here. The first one is what framework do we want to load? Because we haven't specified jQuery or a version number yet. And so let's go ahead and do that. Let's say Google dot load and then we're gonna this is a function so it goes in parentheses and let's go ahead and put a semicolon afterwards now we need to tell it what we want to load and the load needs two arguments in here and they both go in in quotes and you can use single or double I'll use single here the first one is what the framework is so it's jQuery and then a comma and then two more quotes and then which version we want so I'm going to select 1.4.2 and this is kind of a safe version it's not the latest they're on 1.5 something now uh, but we're going to go ahead and tell it to load this here now what is great about this is because jQuery is changing sometimes there might be a bug in something or something is not supported or uh, you know uh, you have some kind of issue rather than have to download an older version find it download it make sure the names are correct link it throughout your site I can just do it in one little line here which is just tell it jQuery 1.4.2. I can roll this up to 1.5.0 or 1.5.1, whatever I want. Um, let's just use this at 1.4.2. We really haven't programmed a lot of jQuery yet, so this probably doesn't mean much to you at this point. Uh, the second command I need, or the second function, is another Google function. It's Google dot and then this is very important that you have this is case sensitive it's the set on load callback function and you can't just write it all in lowercase it's got to be lowercase set capital o n capital o l o a d and then capital c a l l b a c k so make sure you get your camel case correct there so that's set on load callback and this goes in parentheses and i'm going to need a semicolon to end that sentence if you will so what we've done is we've called two functions we've called google dot load we want jquery version 1.4.2 and then what I want to do is set a set on load callback now what needs to go in here well actually a function needs to go inside the parentheses so be very careful make sure your syntax is correct inside the parentheses I'm gonna write the word function and then for functions as you know we need an open parenthesis close parenthesis 
and then we need an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Okay, so this is really important. A lot of times when you run into JavaScript errors, it's because something is off on the syntax, and we're going to put functions inside of functions and all that stuff in here. And that's one thing about running these libraries that does become a bit confusing. Most of it is easy, but the syntax does get confusing because all the you know encapsulated parentheses and stuff. So just please make sure that all open parentheses close and all curly braces close. Inside the two curly braces is where the commands go for that function, like we talked about in other movies. So let's drop a few lines. I'm going to drop a whole bunch of lines and leave a bunch of white space in here. And this is where all the scripting goes. And so basically it just says, hey Google, load up jQuery 1.4.2 and then set the onload callback. So one, in other words, once it's loaded, this is all going to happen. And this is where I can write my scripts and I can talk to jQuery and do all my stuff. It all goes inside that function. That's why I want to leave a bunch of white space so it doesn't get confusing. It's not as easy as just opening a document and going. We've got to tie it to Google. Now, why have we done it this way as opposed to going to jQuery? query and downloading the document. This is a slightly uh, more encouraged best practice, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, two reasons. First of all, uh, on that google.load, uh, I can very easily load up jQuery and I can specify a version number. So if I need to roll back or change the version number because something either works or doesn't work or whatever I'm trying to do, I can do it right here. I don't have to go download it again and link it up and change the name and, and worry about all that. So it's real easy. It's just one line of code to change the version number. And the second reason I'm doing it this way is because uh, if you've ever surfed the web on a mobile phone, you realize that it's a much slower experience than a desktop computer, and most of that is because the processor in the in the mobile device is just not as strong as a computer. Uh, the browsers are constantly being updated to change this, but the fact of the matter is, when you have JavaScript-based websites that get very JavaScript-intensive, the browser has to render all that code, and it makes it very difficult. And sometimes you have a slow-loading website, and it has nothing to do with the speed of the connection and how fast the server is actually serving up the pages. It has to do with how fast the browser can comprehend the JavaScript that's coming in. And that can slow things down. And so what's nice about this is let's say that the user has been to some other websites recently. It's very possible that this framework, if, if another site has done it the same way, has been cached. And what that means is the browser has a cache. It's basically a folder and it sticks images and scripts and all kinds of things in there. And it checks that folder when it goes to a website to see if it actually has to download anything. And this is kind of an old practice that you know just speeds up the experience, especially back in the days where we had had really slow connections. And so what it'll do is, is if there's a really large image, it'll check the cache first to see if it already has it. That way it doesn't have to download it again. And it does the same thing with JavaScripts. It will check the cache. And so there's a good chance that if another website is called jQuery using the same method that it's already been cached the same way. So those are two reasons to do this. Now, let's write a script in here just to verify that everything has loaded correctly. And what I'm going to do is just call an alert. Alert. And then we're going to, in quotations, say loaded and let's put an exclamation point in there just so we know it's ready. Okay, so what this does is you can tell this worked because what's going to happen, let's go back over to index.html. In the top, in the header, it's going to load these two scripts in sequence. So it loads the first, it calls the Google server. If this fails, then this one is not going to work. Okay, so if this passes, then it will go on to the next one. So js slash scripts.js. And when you open that file, it's going to say, hey Google, load up jQuery 1.4.2. And if once that's done, we're going to call back the Google.set on load callback. So in other words, in English, is what happens when once that's loaded. So it means on load the jQuery, then do this, alert equals loaded. So if it doesn't load it, this won't work. So let's go back over to the desktop. I'm going to open that index.html, and lo and behold, loaded comes in. So if something went wrong, that will not load. And so it's very important to understand. So anyway, I hope you work along in these examples, and don't let it confuse you. Take things slow. Watch them a couple times if you need to. And uh, I will see you in the next episode, and we'll start talking about how to uh, write JavaScripts uh, that use the jQuery framework. So I'll see you in the next one.